President of the General Assembly, Secretary General, honored delegates, good to meet you here. Uh, I think it's very promising that you take upon you uh, to make the machinery of the United Nations work. If we didn't have the United Nations, we had to invent it because we need at least one institution where each and every country in this world uh, join together and try to work together. There will be a lot of discussions, of course, if the uh, United Nations as an institution, as an organization, is efficient enough. But it will never be more efficient than the uh, huge majority, especially the major powers of, 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 of the members, will allow it to be. Uh, but anyway, I think we have to notice that even when the number of conflicts, especially uh, from our perspective in Denmark, uh, in Eastern Europe, in Ukraine, in the Middle East, are increasing, uh, the United Nations has been able to participate in an increasing number of conflict solutions uh, uh, around the globe. And you never before in the existence of the United Nations you have had so many uh, soldiers under the command of the United Nations and the regional organizations in peacekeeping operations around the world. So uh, it's a mixed picture, but, but uh, still a lot is being done and uh, a lot is being done also in the uh, different uh, sub-organizations associated to the United Nations. I, I, my, the time will not allow me to go into many details here, and I think about the conflicts and the peace and, and war issues. Uh, my, my friend Uffe Ellerman will, will go more into details, uh, but uh, a few words on that also, because uh, war and peace is mostly an issue for the Security Council, of course. And you know the construction of the Security Council uh, with the, the permanent five having the veto rights. You cannot uh, get any decisions on, on, on early international issues without uh, the acceptance, at least, of, of the permanent five and the majority in the Security Council as well. Uh, and, and that means that uh, a number of conflicts uh, the United Nations are not able to, to go into uh, and try to solve. We know about Syria today, we, we, we know the problems in Ukraine. And uh, there is a lot of discussions going on, of course, of, of a reform of the Security Council. Uh, I, I think we have to be realistic. The permanent file will not give away their veto powers. Maybe, hopefully, there will be a kind of understanding that they will use it less than they used to do, and hopefully there will be a kind of understanding that more countries will be permanent, have a permanent presence in the Security Council, so that this very essential body of the United Nations will be more representative for the world of, of 2015, and not only of the world of, of 1945. But, anyway, with or without uh, veto powers, with or without a reform of the composition of the Security Council, you have to accept the fact that there will be no permanent, there will be no huge reforms in the global uh, economic order without the acceptance of the United States, China and Europe. And there will be no uh, final solutions of the most uh, uh, dangerous conflicts without the acceptance of the United States, Russia, and China, and Europe. So uh, it's not that outdated with the composition of the Security Council and the Permanent Fund, as it may look from the first glance. I have had the uh, honor to be nominated for the uh, 70th General Assembly starting in September to have your job as President of the, the, the United Nations uh, General Assembly.
for one year. Uh, the most dominant issue on the agenda of the 70s General Assembly will be what we call Sustainable Development Goals. You know, of course, about the Millennium Development Goals. You know that we have been able, partly because of the United Nations initiatives and, and uh, uh, actions, to cut into half the extreme poverty in this world in the last 15 years. The ambition for the next 15 years will be to eradicate extreme poverty around the world. But the difference between Millennium Development Goals and Sustainable Development Goals, as we are trying to, to uh, write them down right now uh, over the summer and decide them on a global summit meeting in September, where I will be in in the chairman's uh, chair, uh, is that we take much more all the interactions between the global challenges into account. That we are trying not only to make a global consensus on how to <coughs> eradicate extreme poverty, but to create and get accepted and get the member countries committed on what you could call an economic development model for the globe, which, make, which makes this globe both socially and environmentally sustainable to be in. That's a very huge ambition, but we have to realize two things. We have to realize that, well, yes, we have cut extreme poverty in half, uh, but at the same time, inequalities within countries and between countries have increased. We are living in a totally unstable world where 83 dollar billionaires command more wealth than half the human race. <coughs> That's challenging. And we are not able to continue the fight against extreme poverty in this world without having a new kind of economic growth, yes, but also redistribution, uh, uh, much more efficient redistribution of wealth and income within countries and between countries. So that's the more comprehensive uh, uh, agenda we are trying to write for the sustainable development goals. But the other, the other side of it, uh, the other part of it, is that we have to realize that with three times as many human beings on the globe as when why when as when I was born around 70 years ago. Each of them, on average, taking more of the global capital, natural resources, we have to design another lifestyle than at least we are uh, accustomed to have in this part of the world. We have to accept the simple fact when a couple of billion people in Asia and elsewhere are reaching out for the same lifestyle as we have in North America and Western Europe, two things can be said for sure. They will not get it and we cannot keep it. We have to live in a different way. Not less interesting, not in any way depressing, but uh, much more environment friendly, uh, addressing, for instance, as a big, big issue of 2015, the climate change challenges. Because if we don't do that, we are heading to enormous migrant problems and associated conflicts around the globe. If a few hundred million people in Bangladesh and in India in Vietnam will have within your lifetime to move 
away because of rising seawaters. Uh, you can you can imagine many more conflicts than the many we already are facing with migration on this globe. So even for that reason, we have to face uh, the extremely heavy challenges of changes in the environment, the climate, within a small uh, period of time. Because if we don't do that, we will have a totally unsta unstable globe, meaning uh, instability, uh, ever-changing, uh, ever-increasing problems uh, uh, with water, uh, drinking water, uh, higher uh, uh, sea levels and so on, uh, but, but, but also increasing number of conflicts. It can be solved. No doubt about that, technology will be a big help, but it takes an enormous step forward in international commitments, international cooperation, and that's why the United Nations is so essential, more than ever, in this time and age. Thank you very much.